Hello everyone, and welcome to our pre-movie interview for the movie Soul Stealer. My name is Franklin Tanton, and I'm one of the directors in the movie. We also had Charles Henry and Rod Oliver as directors as well. Uh, Mr. Oliver is also, he also wrote the script and is the producer along with the Detroit Public Benefit Corporation. We have two of the major cast here with us tonight, and they're going to tell us a little bit about their background. Uh, our cast members here tonight is Miss Shelley Keller and Mr. Donnie McNeil. Uh, Shelley, we want to find out a little bit from you first. Tell us a little bit about your experience in working with some of Rod Oliver Productions. Okay, Frank. Um, actually, the first movie that I worked on of Rod's was Silent Prophecy. And uh, this was actually the first time that I had ever acted. And uh, I played this role. Uh, my character's name was Darlene. And Darlene goes to the store and she buys this gargoyle statue. And unbeknownst to her, the statue has these magical powers that grants wishes. She takes it home and her husband um, unwittingly makes this wish that he wishes he had billions and billions of dollars. And the wish is granted. And at first they think it's great, they have all this money, but it ends up ruining their lives and wreaking havoc and they wish that it never had happened. And they want to get rid of the statue and all this money and just go back to the way their life was before. And so the moral of the story is, you know, be careful what you wish for because you just might get it. Um, you know, one time we shot and it took us 13 hours. We were up till 3 o'clock in the morning, and I was tired, and we shot each scene like 10 different times, and I thought, I can't believe this, this isn't all glamour, you know? Um, but it was still, it, 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 I kind of got that acting bug after doing that movie, and I was uh, real anxious to see, you know, if maybe Rod would get me involved in some of his other movies. So the next movie that I was in was called Masters of the Game, and actually I worked with Donnie McNeil, I played his girlfriend, and that was actually just a very small role, and um, I got killed off early. And uh, kind of a funny thing that happened when we made this movie, uh, we were filming in a park, and uh, one of the characters was killing me, and I had to scream, and there was this fire department across the road, and they heard me screaming, and they came running over because they thought someone was hurt, and a guy was riding his bike through there. There was a trail, and he stopped, and he wanted to know what was going on, and we kept having to tell people, please, you know, we're making a movie, keep going, and uh, so that was kind of funny. But making movies with Rod Oliver is great. It's, it's an interesting experience, and um, you know, I look forward to working on some more of his movies. You know, as I listen to you, I can I can see the joy. You know, when you talk about that, is this something you've always wanted to do? Making lots of money and being in every magazine, wearing those fancy clothes. But you know, I never really thought that something like that would happen. So I never pursued anything like that until I met Rod, and he actually, for Silent Prophecy, offered me a small role at first, where I'd just do a couple of lines, and I thought, well, okay, why not? And then he came back and said, did you, did you want to play the part of Darlene? And I thought, oh, I've never acted before. I was excited, but I was also kind of nervous. But, um, you know, once you get going, you get into your role. And I really started to enjoy it because Rod is pretty flexible. He allows us to improvise and put a little of ourselves into the role so it becomes more believable. So during that process, I've really um, kind of gotten the acting bug. <laughs> Okay, good, good. Now, Donnie, you want to tell us about your experiences with uh, Rod Olive Productions? Well, um, <clears throat> Frank, I was in that production <clears throat> titled Masters of the Game, as uh, Shelley told you. And I was a character that went by the name of Slick Willie. <laughs> now, Slick Willie, he was, uh, he was a gambler and a hustler, and, uh, you know, he, was, he broke the law. But he, he was a good person, you know, he didn't hurt anybody. So Slick Willie hung around with a couple of other guys and, and, and one of the other guys name was Mad Dog. And he got that name rightfully. <laughs> so Slick Mad Willie Dog. doesn't like Mad Dog. And Slick Willie thought, you know, I'm not liking Mad Dog the way he's hurting people and so on and so forth and, and maybe he needs to do something about Mad Dog. And all the while Slick Willie always believed that Mad Dog killed his girlfriend, but he never could prove it. So Slick Willie decided to devise a plan to take care of Mad Dog. 
and it was a slick plan because he was slick Willie. So he, he you know, okay. his his purpose was to to let Mad Dog do itself in, okay. you know, out of his own greed and hate and so on and so forth. So he put this plan together and he put it into motion and. If you want to see what happened, you got to check out Masters of the Game. <laughs> okay, well, it sounds like that's another movie that we should look forward to from Rod Oliver. But tell me, in your when did you get started into the movie uh, business? Well, um, I um, acting in general. I mean, I started acting like a lot of other people, you know, in school. You do some plays, but when I got to the point where I started doing productions, where you, you you realize how you really are trying to work and create a character from from what they give you on paper and what the director wants and then what you can bring within yourself and you see how creative it is and, mm -hmm. and that's what people are drawn to I believe in the theater is the creativity of they creating this make-believe world and the audience believes it mm -hmm. you know you're in this environment but you okay. believe it anyway and and, and the creative thing is, is what draws me to it also. Um, and I, I, I've been in these productions with Rod Oliver, and I like the way he deals with his actors. And like Shelley says, he's flexible, and he, he lets you expound and, and lets you kind of go freely. And I like the way he works and directs. And, and I'm hoping to stick with him, hope he gets a nice break, and I get a break with him. <laughs> 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 okay, and I guess that's what everybody's always looking for <laughs> that gets into the field. Okay, well, let's share with our viewers a little bit of insight of the movie The Soul Stealer. Shelley, would you tell us a little bit about your involvement with that? Okay, sure. Um, actually, when Rodney offered this part, I was really excited about this, and uh, I play Satani, and I'm the devil. And I awake from this deep sleep and I'm in Detroit and I decide I need some souls. I want to gather up some souls because I want to conquer the universe and I need this army of people to help me. So in order to do this, I open up a house of cards uh, where people come in and they play pity pat with me and they gamble. And I put the word out on the street that some people won millions and millions of dollars and uh, so the word gets out to the junkies and the drug addicts and the losers and the down and out people and they start to come to my place and knock me on the door and they want to win this easy fast money and um, I end up taking their life and their soul. I, uh, I'll, sometimes during the card game I'll let them play one hand and I might let them win but then by the second hand I have everything they have to offer and I'll say well you know I have your car, I have all your money how about this, if you lose, you work for me. I'll give you a job. And they say, sure, that's fine. And really their job is to be uh, in my um, hold and to do my bidding, which is evil. So uh, in this movie, my nemesis, which is played by Donnie, um, he's on my trail and he's out to stop me. And at the end, we have this big face off. And uh, when I had to shoot fireballs at each other and we're supposed to have these worldly powers where we can knock each other down and I thought there's no way we're going to be able to do this. But the amazing thing with Rod is he's very creative and when he sets his mind to doing something he, he comes up with a way. So uh, you know he does everything, he pays for everything out of his pocket, we don't have a big budget and uh, we just think of different ways to, to do these things. <laughs> Um, in the scenes where we had to shoot fireballs at each other, um, he found these things you slip on your finger and you push a button and it shoots out some flames at people. And, and at first I was scared to try it. I thought I would burn my finger, I was going to shoot somebody's eye out or, or whatever. <laughs> but it ended up being fun being able to do that. Um, and uh, I have found in this movie, Soul Stealers, the level of professionalism. Rodney's really starting to attract some actors and actresses that uh, have a lot of experience and that are very, very good. And so it's been really exciting to see to see that. Sounds like you had a great time. Donnie, you want to share your experiences with us from Soul Steel? <laughs> yeah, well, Frank, um, I, um, I came on board uh, for Soul Stealer 
actually I was not cast as the character David, which is who I portray in it. One day Rod saw a videotape of a production that I was in titled uh, Whip Hammer and Cross. And, and he said, uh, that's the character I want for David. And in that production I portrayed Jesus. Well, I said, well, maybe I should change my character and be David and just bring that into the role. And so we switched, and, and it worked out to seem for the best uh, for me to do that. Uh, and, and I portrayed David, and he's very similar to the biblical character David, and that was by design. And he uh, he knows Satani has broken loose, and so he goes through, and he, he goes through the city to track down Satani. And, and on his way, he helps out the down and out and so on and so forth, and he does what he does anyway, but... He finally runs to this house of cards that Satani has and he goes in to challenge her to a game. And to see what happens, you got to check out Soul Still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we're all really looking forward to, to really seeing this movie. Um, I want to share a few things with you. I am one of the directors on the movie. And it has been a very interesting experience to be involved in this particular situation. I've never uh, directed a movie before, so this was my big opportunity to expand. <laughs> it made the job so easy for me. Uh, I, I can really appreciate dealing with... Uh, people of this caliber that we're sitting here talking with, uh, it makes a big difference when you're trying to accomplish things. And people who are very flexible, like you mentioned earlier, we were talking about Rod and how he works things out and gets things done. So we all work together as a family and it has made a big difference and I think you will see from the movie and the results of it that, uh, that uh, it was a lot of work that went into it and everybody really enjoyed doing uh, this particular production. Now, is there any other things that you would like to add before we uh, move to the movie this evening from either of you? Let's go to the movie so still. <laughs> <laughs> so we see what happens. Ah, you can't wait to see it. Either. That's right. I can't either. <laughs> okay. But before we go there, I'd just like to share with you that Rodney Oliver has made uh, several productions. The Last Table, The Dark Spirited Woman, The Ace of Hearts, Nothing But Time, and Silent Prophecy is some of the productions that he has done in the past. So here we move to the Soul Stealer. <laughs> <laughs>